It's often said that a soldier's life is 10% excitement and 90% boredom. You learn to enjoy the downtime when you've got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you got there? I don't know. <laughs> Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy something. As the crazy eights relax, I enjoy the camaraderie. But after you took that shrapnel for me, back in that 810 Warthog Street. You dove on you and the officer? Yes. Yeah, I was there. But yeah. That is true, eh? You dove yeah. on you? Yes, he did. Covering his private. Yeah. <laughs> it's covering my privates. You can put a spin on it any way you want, Johnny. I know you love me. In Strong Point Center, Taliban have been spotted about a kilometer and a half away. A lav moves in from another platoon for a coordinated show of force. Looking for reaction. Master Corporal Randy Power is on communications. Okay, enemy strength is just being sent right now. 20 purse located in graveyard. Three ones actually. Three ones putting in an indirect uh, 60 millimeter roll. And uh, 20 purse been spotted in the graveyard there and uh, taking up defensive positions. Rounds are in the air now. Rounds are in the air. One zero seconds. Oh, I guess it was pretty heavy contact. Did we get any fucking standby movement orders or anything? No. Okay. Here, guys, just come here. I'll tell you what's going on. I guess there's a graveyard. All right, right now they've got uh, 20 personnel that have moved in that graveyard into a defensive posture. They take an RPG and small arms fire. Three Niner, who was out here doing the show of force, has moved down to support. Three One's got their 60 millimeter mortar out in the indirect roll, gonna fucking put fire in on it. And well, you heard the artillery coming. So, it's down there, a couple K down the road. Eight platoon is not called into the action. The fight is primarily handled from the air. But Randy Power thinks it's only a matter of time. It's um, based on the, how much this intensifies and the effect of what's going on right now. I mean, uh, there's an escalation. There's a, there's a probing on the enemy's part on, on our positions and that. And obviously, they're looking for vulnerabilities. You're right over there. You see them? Oh, they're down now. You see them? Oh, that's yeah, I know. They're moving back. They're the ones that are fighting. You're gonna stay in here. Put your fucking kid on. That night was the most tense we would witness. While many of the veterans at Strong Point North are prepared, maybe even eager to get back at it, the action is up the road at Strong Point Center, where about eight Taliban have been spotted, not a kilometer away this time, but close, very close. Well, the fucking Taliban is coming between fights. The ANA send men out after the Taliban. A brave move by the Afghans, but it means the Canadians can't shoot, even at moving targets. House, right here is house, building. Yeah. Three guys, buildings. Three guys. Yeah, four guys up there is like lights. Yeah. yeah. We see them too. We can see them. Yeah. Um, Yeah, 
because you can see and guys you tell for me yes. I, I am talking with the NA communication director yes. Yes. Okay. I will let them know yeah don't shoot him right okay <laughs> yes. We are ordered to put on our kit, our protective gear, stay alert, even sleep with our boots on. There is scattered gunfire all night. Nobody sleeps well. About midnight, possible contact off to the east. At one o'clock, a single shot. At 3.30, a burst of gunfire. And then just before first light, another show of force, pushing the intruders away. It was an initiation for the replacements, and for us, but just another night in Panjoy for the crazy eights. I think we're used to it by now, <clears throat> but uh, well, it's Afghanistan. The morning after the Taliban probe. Okay. Now, water and hot sauce. You ready? Yep. Okay, let's go. Soldiers are ingenious. They learn to work with what they've got. Should be going. Yeah, it's going, it's going. A stink bomb is chemical warfare, crazy eight style. Hey. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> Where's your gas mask, Kirk? <laughs> a lot of good it's doing, yeah. After a few days, I get the rhythm. You're on watch or waiting your turn. I realize that I have stopped thinking of them as replacements and veterans. They are now all soldiers. By our last day, I'm starting to feel at home in the dust, settling in as Private Steve Keegan holds court with a message for home. Tell the camera what is in that letter. This is a letter to Don the Man Cherry, Voice of Canada, and uh, that other guy. Which Ron, I think. Ron? <laughs> Just kidding, Ron. I love you too, buddy. Mm, tell Matt to grab the fucking team by the horns this year and win it. For fuck's sakes. Jesus. I could die this year, and I would have never seen the Leafs win. Keep that on your fucking conscience, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. Well, at least you're not a Haas fan. But the work never stops, even when it's just children approaching. It's a daily grind. Keep the area safe. Keep yourself alive. And if they aren't talking about hockey, 
The soldiers are talking about home. My wife says all the time she's got baby fever. What if a baby? What if a baby? And you know what? Two years ago, that would have freaked me out. But now I can't wait. Perspectives change. They change a great, especially when you're in shit like this. So tell me about your home life. What are you missing when you're here? Silly stuff. I mean, there's stuff that when I'm at home makes me angry. Like my little girl, we'll put her to bed and she'll be up there for roughly three minutes and come back downstairs a few times and then go back up for another three minutes and come back down and say she had a bad dream when she has only been up there for three minutes. You know, stuff like that that sort of frustrates a parent. It's stuff like that that you almost miss. It's, I don't know, it's strange. Uh, hardest part about anything I've done with the military is being away from them. By far, that's the hardest thing. You gonna replace me? Let's see. Um, six purse, funny nails. Yeah, but uh, they were just huffing that shit off the roof earlier to the front of us, and uh, all of a sudden they've slowed down and they're just kind of dicking around. So I don't know if anything's up there. Just look for any boxes or weird shit that they're taking off. Yeah. What do you worry about? I guess it's how my friends and family is gonna react if I don't make it home. That's the only thing I worry about. I'll be dead, so. I don't have to worry about that, but I worry about how they're going to feel. Worry a little bit how much is this changing me also. When I get home, I'm sure I'm going to be a little, a little different. But I guess I'll deal with that when the time comes. 3-2, let them know we've got a jingle truck that's approximately 200 meters west of uh, my location. Uh, six times fighting age males. I want to get in there and find out what they're doing. Any particular formation? Yeah, I was go fucking... Uh... Go extend the line, we'll just walk across. Extend the line? Yeah. Extend the line. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the Crazy Eight, uh, we've, we've done quite a bit out here, we've seen quite a bit. And uh, I think that uh, everyone here has handled it well, and uh, nobody is ready to go yet. The mission isn't done, and uh, as long as there's a job to do, uh, you can count on 8 platoon, we'll be here. At the end of October, we headed home. Just before Christmas, I got an email from Private Keegan. Eight platoon stayed out in the Panjue dust for 57 days straight. They returned to Canada in late February.